education, which kind of uh, improved my skills. I'm naturally a very shy person, but once I did a lot of uh, presentation in the department, I, ca I kind of got comfortable with the presentation. So I would say I acquired some, acquired some soft skills, and uh, maybe I can break down in form of uh, communication, um, presentation, public speaking, mm -hmm. yeah, and listening. Sometimes, you, you, if you if you do not understand what you're being told, I don't think um, you cannot really give a correct uh, response to something. So you need to develop the skill of listening. So that's mm -hmm. what I can say. Just to highlight a few, uh, adaptability was one that that stood out for me. It was a whole different environment for me at home and a first job, a new country. Uh, different means of transportation, so it was a whole different change for me. So one's ability to adapt to different or changing expectations in a changing environment is very valuable for an employer or a prospective employer because a working environment can also change from time to time. So that was um, a skill that I learned very quickly to, to pick up in the first two weeks or so of my uh, experience or my internship in Switzerland. Uh, a few other soft skills I would say would be communication like Bupe mentioned, discipline, uh, general work ethic, professionalism, punctuality, how to, to work in a team. <laughs> yeah, it uh, definitely taught me something about myself and that I need to learn to question things more. Like, I, I'm a person who really likes to just like, okay, you said this is what I'm gonna do and then I'm just, I start doing it. And then um, I found that working in a team, like the one that I was working in, it's really good to visualize what you're working on so the whole team is aware of it, that you, everybody's aware of what everybody's doing and also of your progress um, be, while, while you're dealing with this task so that if something is taking a bit longer than it should, then you can get some help and you, don't, you feel a little bit more comfortable like sharing with your teammates like, oh, I'm having a bit of a problem here. So building that kind of communication was really good for me. And I use that personally, like with my friends and family, like even with uh, other situations, but also with work now, because we're working in a very free space mm -hmm. where there aren't a lot of restrictions, but that means we have to take a lot of initiative. Switzerland, I, I would say maybe the whole of Europe, they have quite an established food safety system. Mm -hmm. So like going back home, I think there were so many areas which I realized that we can do better and we can do more. Um, so I think that actually led me to one of the goals that I set myself after uh, living in Switzerland, which I'll, I'll talk about a bit later. But definitely in terms of like how, how well we can do as a country in terms of like food safety, that definitely changed my view. When you are selected for the B360 program, right, it's, it is a reward for what you've done up until that time, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And coming here is a window to what is available to you if you continue on your current trajectory, right? Mm -hmm. And it seems to me they take that to heart because when I see them back in Vento, they literally are different people. When I returned back home, my family saw me much of a leader and more of a responsible person because the way they saw I got on really well when I was in Switzerland, I was away for three months and I was able to adapt. So when I left for UK, they were not so worried as they were before because they were much, they were much more confident. <laughs> they were much more confident, even though I was going to be gone for a year. They didn't really worry much. As for my friends, I was seeing much more of a role model and an inspiration because people were much more interested in partaking in, in international opportunities. Because many a times my friends would approach me and wonder, how do you do it to get such prestigious opportunities like? B360, <laughs> like how do you do it? So now I think they are much more interested because I believe now they are able to dream because they are aware that there are support systems like B360 that are willing to help them to reach their goals. These people became more comfortable coming to me about, so where do you hear about these opportunities, yeah. you know, and why are you always traveling so much and, and like how do you even get into contact with these people? So it has allowed me to become like a touch point for people to connect to programs like B360 and also the other organizations that I was able to be a part of as a result of my internship. The sending abroad of students, um, whether it's for internships or for semester exchange, it's a key component of internationalization of education. And this is part of our institution's strategic plan. It's a key part. 
And so for us to, to be in a, in, in a position where we can send from 2011 to 2019 approximately 60 students, right? Each one of them for three months on a fully funded internship, right? This is, I almost can't put it into words, right? What this means. It's incredibly difficult for us to send students abroad on exchange if it's not a fully funded opportunity. Mm -hmm. And even in those instances, there are still financial challenges. And so to have these internships which come to us fully funded, really, it, it is an absolute blessing, you know, because it allows my department to fulfill our mandate in sending students abroad, right? We get our students out there, we get them in industry, right? And what's also very important, not just for my department, but for NAST, you know, is the fact that there's a continuation of these internships in Switzerland, right? It, to some extent, it overturns a perception in Namibia that university graduates are not ready for the world of work. Mm -hmm. But yet, we are sending students to Switzerland and the companies here are happy with our students. So, when I started working for the ministry, um, there was an opportunity for me to actually move to a stage of where one can do uh, policy reviews and legislation. But that's a job that I believe the ministry will need you to have at least 10 years of working experience, five at best. But at the time I only had maybe two years or less. So when we, was during the interviews, I think the part when I mentioned that I had done an internship in Switzerland, which has to do with uh, uh, food safety, I think even at one of our events, one lady also mentioned that when she mentioned uh, the opportunity in the interview, it's like the whole panel basically just forgot about all the other questions that we're supposed to, <laughs> to ask. And the whole focus is like they, they just want to know more about uh, which, in any case, I would say works in your favor because after that, I mean, it's almost assured that you have aroused their curiosity and easily your job, I can say, wink, wink is yours. <laughs> when I went back, I got a job at an abattoir. It used to export uh, meat to South Africa, but unfortunately it was closed because they were not complying to the export standards because we use South African standards and they were not in compliance. So the Ministry of Agriculture decided to revoke the, the license. So I had to implement a food safety management system and I think I had exactly not more than two months yeah because they really wanted to to export because they don't provide for the namibian market since it's not highly competitive so i was really under pressure and that was the first time that i was working i've never worked in a food factory before and i've never worked with elderly people before so as nico said it was really challenging to get them to listen to me to someone that just came straight from school that has never worked before but at the end of the day, I managed to implement the food safety management system and the company started exporting to South Africa again. And they really are evidence of the saying that travel broadens the mind. You know, that's, yeah. that's, that's, the, that's the main thing, right? Because I've seen it with the students who've just come back to Namibia now. Um, what came out from my discussion with them, my debrief with them, was that the way that life is in Namibia and how our society expects your life to progress, the path, right? That's not the only way that life is supposed to progress. There are other ways in other places in the world, right? And it tells us that our way is not necessarily the right way. Maybe there isn't one right way, but this kind of experience opens them up to the reality that you can actually choose your path in life, right? You don't have to, especially for the ladies, I say it to them all the time, you don't have to finish studying, get a job, find a man, get married, have a child. No. If you want to go into postgrad, you can go into postgrad. If you want to just maximize your career and not have a family, it's possible for you. And they realize that because they've come here and they've seen that that it's a reality for many people. My future plans uh, as it goes for the next few years, I'm looking at, uh, in terms of short term, I'm looking at working on projects where I would have to use data analysis to um, kind of analyze a social issue and try to create 
uh, visualization of that data to communicate it in some way which would invoke action. So data for action and not just awareness. Um, that's kind of the direction that I'm going in with my whole life now, like with the career in data science. So in order to get this done, it's first working on projects like what I'm working on in France right now. And then next step is to go into my postgraduate studies masters with a more focused idea of which social um, problem that I want to deal with to really hone the skill. And then from that, I want to actually look into the data policy of my country to see who, like, if we're actually looking at who owns the data and how data is used. I'll be back by, uh, back home where I plan on approaching the, the UN FAO uh, so I can develop a framework that will eradicate food insecurity in Namibia. Because at the moment we are mostly aware that Namibia is facing a drought which leaves more than 500,000 people without access to food. And the project that I'll be working on with the UN, I'll be looking at the implementation of uh, microorganisms in a sustainable way. More like if we can use uh, bacteria to eradicate food insecurity, to eradicate food, in <laughs> to eradicate food insecurity in a, in a really sustainable way. I think this is where I'm heading to. And once I go back home, I would like to continue working with FAO and see where this will take me. And if you take a look at them, Ndapo is an established professional. She's now, we've almost completed the circle with her because she's now involved in Career Starter Week, mm -hmm. right? She's one of our local professionals. This is a new direction that we are taking it into with South-South collaboration, mm -hmm. where we are going to leverage the experience and the resources of B360 um, to build bridges with the local private sector. The alumni group is um, a very interesting group for me because of the different backgrounds of, of everyone that's in, in the group, the different sectors in the industry that everyone um, and those coming together. So I now more, know far more people in say health, safety, or even engineering. Even in, in, in the industry that I'm in, economics for example, I know uh, more young professionals in there because of the B360 than I did before. And as these professionals grow into their roles, it becomes an even bigger networking opportunity for each and every one of us. And I am really honored to be a part of a part of that. Through this network, I have gotten to know people from Namibia from different backgrounds, you see. And uh, these guys will very soon hold responsible position in their government or in important institutions like UN. Mm -hmm. So you see, as we integrate more, um, I mean as in, as we know each other more through this opportunity, uh, we we'll gain um, who create a bigger network which will make it easier for us to share resources and the sharing of resources and resources also includes ideas and skills as well. So the sharing of such resources will bring about um, uh, great effort to eradicate poverty in our respective countries. That's the reason why we are integrating because according to trade theory uh, it's easier to fight against power. That's the reason why we've got uh, goals such as uh, the sustainable development goals and so on and so forth. So I think this alumni is very important. I feel I'll gain a lot by um, working with other people from different backgrounds, from different countries within Southern Africa. And in this case, it's Zambia, Namibia and South Africa.